So I printed a very detailed Eiffel Tower design that I found on Thingiverse. And my daughter saw it and wanted me to print it in pink. I'll show you how it went on today's Filament Friday. So I found the original design, the Eiffel Tower, by user GW Hancock on Thingiverse. And this was the most detailed design that I have ever seen. It's got girders going all the way through it. There's not a solid section and then just a girder look on the outside. This thing actually looks like the true Eiffel Tower. But it also looked like it'd be tough to print. So I figured I'd give it a shot. So I brought the pieces individually into uh, Simplify 3D. And it said it had to resize them each time. So whatever dimensions they used to make this file, Simplify 3D had to convert it. So I don't know exactly what the conversion rate was, but I ended up printing individual pieces, the bottom, the middle, the top, and then I printed the antenna separately on my Fabricator Mini, where the other three pieces, I, was, I sent them to my maker front and then printed them individually. Now the settings that I used weren't anything special, a 0.2 layer height, 15% uh, fill, and 225 degrees temperature. And then when I clicked on prepare to print, this took longer than most uh, Simplify 3D prints take to slice, at least from my experience. So there clearly was a lot of detail in this, even for Simplify 3D. So this took, uh, I don't know, probably close to a full minute for this thing to slice and to look like it does here. And this was the result. Um, you could see I just had different colors because I set it for feature type. But these railings here are what didn't print. They just were too small. So that's where if I make this thing bigger, I'm thinking it may be able to print those railings. But it said 4 hours and 52 minutes to print, and this took a lot longer than that. So clearly, Simplify 3D was off. And here's the result. And this thing is amazingly detailed. It printed really, really well. And it's printed in ABS a silver or a gray ABS. And it's a filament that I got from the 3D printing nerd, Joel Telling. And it's Aurorum filament, which is the same company that makes the Wombot. That, and he sent me the Wombot printer that I'm still working, trying to improve it. And the filament came with it. And the filament's right back here on the, on the maker front. I am amazed at how well this stuff printed because this is ABS and there's no splitting. There's no warping. It just is a fantastic print, and I can see all the way through the girders. There's not a bunch of blobs inside. I'm not saying it's a perfect print, but it's pretty close. And I printed it this way, the bottom this way, and there was girders on the top, or railing, actually. And the railing was too fine. It didn't really come out. And because I printed it this way without supports, there's some stringing here. But everything else... Is, is such fine detail it came out really really good now the antenna like I said I printed that on a fabricator mini that came out beautifully so when my daughter saw this she goes I want one but in pink and my wife wanted to just paint it I said, no I can get some pink plastic so I went to my local micro center I found some inland pink plastic only PLA rather than ABS thinking it would print even better wasn't the case. It printed, but it's very melted. It's very crude. I really can't see through the girders. But then I didn't really run my test that I normally do. When I set up new plastic or a new printer, I always run my chess piece. And this is a chess piece I had in my book, Beginner's Guide to 3D Printing. But it's a good test print because there's a lot of detail that's tough to print. I know the DaVinci 1.0 can't print it. The Junior can print it, but it's a little bit rough. The Fabricator Mini can print it beautifully, but you got to get the settings right. And I printed it on the same settings as this, and I had pitting. I had missing plastic, and it's just not as smooth. It's a little bit rough in spots. It just wasn't flowing right. So I adjusted the temperature like 5 degrees up, and I actually increased the flow rate, and then it came out almost perfect. It's just thing is just beautiful. So at that point I knew I was good. So I went back and printed it again and I can even tell this thing is a lot heavier than this one. So it definitely 
more plastic flowed into this. And the detail is a lot better. Now it's still not as good as the gray. And I can see through the girders and spots and, and up in here, but not at the very top. The antenna I printed on the Fabricator Mini, and even that isn't as good as the gray. So there's definitely a difference with this plastic. And it is cheap plastic. It's 15 bucks a roll. I use inlet all the time for various projects that just aren't really that critical. But when you get into something that's really detailed like this, the filament does matter. And clearly the Aurora printed really, really good. But I also did something really right with this that I haven't totally figured out. I think I had the flow rate adjusted perfectly because I went back and printed it again. Only I did all the pieces together, not individually. And I was doing a time lapse and I had to stop it because the, uh, well, the antenna printed like crap. But there were spots of this just looked really, really bad. And in fact, the middle section right here just quit printing altogether. I don't know why it just quit printing and then I noticed that this was kind of crude and it just broke away and you can just see it's just rough so there clearly was something wrong in the way this flowed but I had the same temperature settings it was the same file um, the same file settings that I, that I did before just like I said grouped them together but I think the flow rate was off because this was just running at like hundred percent versus I think I had 125 when I did this so I'm gonna have to go back and redo it and figure out how I got this to print so good because I didn't I didn't save everything so I can't even tell you exactly what I did but this was a fun and challenging print and I enjoyed it I the next step I want to do is I want to actually print it bigger so this plate this uh, base fits on this whole plate so it's gonna be you know like four times this size so that should make it a lot taller too so all the girding and all that the detail will then be bigger because when you print something on one of those big printers you also are resizing everything that the detail is now expanded all the gaps are expanded all the the fine detail is expanded so it's easier to print so it's it takes a lot longer but it's easier to print on a big printer than it is detail like this on a smaller printer that's why the the fabricator mini to me is just so amazing at printing small stuff and the maker front has been doing a great job and why I'm becoming more and more impressed with that printer. So I want to try these in different printers. Um, my Wanho, if you see it back here, it's kind of a paperweight right now. I've had all kinds of problems with that thing and this is the second one I've had. Um, I've tried to contact Wanho. I haven't heard back from him yet. The temperature sensors aren't reading properly. I'm getting a DEF error. So it says there's a disconnect or a broken wire or something and I, can't, I haven't been able to find it or dove into the detail of it but it's just it's not it's not delivering you know so I know a lot of people have been getting great results out of that printer I have had bad luck I first had the model price I had to send that back because it it just wouldn't maintain temperature and now this one won't even won't even heat up but anyway that's it so I wanted to show you this if you guys have another Eiffel Tower design that you recommend I print please leave it in the comments below I'll take a look at it because I would like to do a better one um, this is even lighter than this so I know the flow of plastic was not as much as this so there, there's some sweet spot that I gotta find so challenging prints like this are good to do now and then it teaches you a lot and helps you tune your printer and when you get a simpler print of course you know exactly what to do because it prints like this and if you guys try this let me know I'd love to see what you do and, and put it in the comments below so please also consider subscribing to my channel. I'm slowly getting to that 10K level. I really want to cross 10K if I can. And that only happens if you guys subscribe. And even more important, if you could support the channel, you don't have to. Uh, this channel is gonna have some form of free content at all points. Film of Friday will always be here. But I wanna do even more on the Patreon channel and I wanted it's to me it's a separate channel in many ways because I can do so much more of the blog posts and I try to give more and more information to my patreon supporters so they know that I really appreciate what they're doing supporting the channel and I want them to get their money's worth so a dollar a month goes a long way so that's it I will see you next time on filament Friday